Your real estate deal now has a delayed closing? Now what? Before you get there, you should at least know like the top three causes your escrow could be delayed, right? I mean, at least there's way more than three, but, oh, I know, landslides, rising ocean levels, and artificial intelligence. Oh, we ain't got time for that. Uh, those could definitely cause a delayed close of escrow, especially lately, but probably these following three occur more frequently and knowing them in advance can really help you do your best to avoid them. You know, if you're a home buyer or even a home seller, we know them as the unwelcome guests at the closing party of any real estate transaction. The South Bay Los Angeles has been a fast paced real estate market, you know, in the last several years. But even here, things might slow down. So grab a cup of coffee or a martini and let's chat about the top three reasons your escrow might get stuck in neutral. Reason number three, appraisal antics and artificial intelligence a-holes. The bank sends an appraiser to determine your property's value, right? You know this. If their number comes in lower than the agreed upon price, things can get a little chaotic, you know? It's like they're appraising your dreams and telling you they're worth less than you thought. But as a buyer, you can try to renegotiate with the seller or see if there's room for concessions. But this totally depends on what kind of market you're in. The contract usually reads that the property has to appraise at least the purchase price. And if not, the buyer can bail, get their earnest money back. Just know that if it's a strong seller's market and or if there are multiple offers on the same property, which has been happening a lot here in the last several years, you probably won't get any concessions. And you might have to waive this appraisal contingency altogether just to get the deal. Really? That's a thing? Yeah, that's a thing. And as a seller, be prepared to you know discuss the appraisal and try to be flexible, especially if the market has cooled down. Yet... If you have multiple offers and you probably don't have to be flexible and you might want to just move on to buyer number two or take a look at taking an all cash offer. So that's always fun. Look, you can get an out of area appraiser who doesn't know what's going on here in the South Bay, Los Angeles, and they can look at Zillow for guidance. <coughs> Zillow. <laughs> Such a joke. <laughs> we ain't got no time for jokes. And trust me, the robots at Zillow have no idea. What's going on around here at the coast? They're, they're rarely even close and you can get an appraisal that comes back under the purchase price. There's either going to be a seller concession or a buyer concession or cancellation or ordering a second appraisal. This is going to be expensive, isn't it? Maybe. If you have a short close of escrow and the appraisal comes in a bit late, can you see now how this could delay your closing? Fun time! <laughs> Reason number two. Home inspection hiccups, hilarity, etc. Let's just say the buy you're the buyer and you found your dream beach house. But wait, the inspector shows up and finds enough issues to fill your cold plunge pool. Crack foundation, electrical gremlins, ancient cracked sewer for lines. When you look at a home inspection report, suddenly your dream home starts looking like a fixer upper. It, it, it's typical when you're looking at an inspection report. There's always a list. Even at a brand new home, there's always a list. Now, home inspectors are important and they can lead to delays if repairs need to be made or negotiated, or we need to order a couple more specialty inspectors like sewer line inspection, pool inspection, roof, you know. As a buyer, be prepared for those potential delays and, you know, factor in some buffer time. And as a seller, the smart thing to do is address major issues up front to avoid surprises and sink your escrow boat. I don't know what that means. Or how do you do that, you ask? Well, how do you? National stats show 65% of sales that don't close escrow are stemming from home inspection issues. So carry the one if you're a home seller. Why wouldn't you want to get rid of that kind of problem prior to selling? If you could. Now, if you're my home seller and we're working together, I order a home inspection prior to putting the house on the market. Why would I do that? You're probably thinking. Took the words right out of my mouth. It's so obvious. Most ro local real estate agents don't do this. Why? I have no idea. If you're going to sell your house and we get a pre-inspection, you can see if there's any glaring issues in your list of repairs. Remember, there's always a list. That's crap. I take care of my house perfectly. It's pristine. Guess what? There's always a list. We look at the list together. We can talk about a strategy, what to fix, or replace prior to put your house on the market. So there won't be a glaring issue for a buyer later when we're in escrow and the clock is ticking. Can you see how doing this takes a ton of future worry and question marks off your shoulders because you already know what the big issues are in your house. 
I talk about this extensively in my Amazon number one best-selling book, Dwelling Selling, How the Internet Made Selling a House in the South Bay Easy, and other funny stories. Chapter three is devoted to just this. PPF and the interwebs changed everything. There's a link below where you can read that chapter yourself. Disclaimer. One, not a literary work. Two, I use a lot of sarcasm uh, while using facts and logic, of course. I quote myself in the chapter, if you pre-inspect, you will deflect me. By the way, if you want a free copy of that book, reply back or text me at 310-502-4240 and I'll get you one. As a home seller, you can see that you'll want to remove as many potential roadblocks and issues with the property prior to putting it on the market, right? I mean, most home sellers would. So there are houses who we, you know, we don't do pre-inspections. If it's a teardown, if it's a trust and you're selling it as is, or you don't have the extra cash, you know, to put in the house, you know, logical stuff. Which leads me to say this. When you're hiring an agent, hire someone with a large arsenal of marketing techniques and services because we are not all the same and you deserve more. Call me. Okay, see how important number two is? Well, actually, I wanted to... Let's go to... Brrr. Reason number one, financing fiascos fresca. This is a big one. Of course, it only applies, you know, if a buyer's getting some kind of financing. Sometimes, even with pre-approval, the financing could fall through at the last minute, like employment changes, or maybe their debt-to-income ratio changes, or maybe they bought a new car. As a buyer, be upfront with your lender, get all your paper and work before going out looking for a house, and don't buy anything bigger than a pillow when you're an escrow. Oh, a pillow. As a seller, try to stay calm. It's not always the buyer's fault. Sometimes you can have an awful loan officer or a mortgage initiator. Someone who's very good at SLTs. Someone likes toffee? I also wrote about this in my book. Two chapters, by the way. Chapter 11 and 12. Ask me for the book. It's more fun. Stupid lender tricks. In the glossary at the end. Things lenders do to prolong your agony whilst trying to obtain a home loan so they can pay for their boat in King Harbor. In which I play a game, it's called LOL, Loan Officer Lingo. What they say versus what they meant. Want to play a little? Okay. Here's the one we hear most often is... No problem. No problem. Problem. Working on it. Not working on it. We're looking into it. Can't find that file. Good news. Your loan application is with the underwriters. We don't have a loan with that buyer's name, do we? Good news. The loan funded into escrow, we... Oh my God, I need loan approval. I just told them it was funded. It goes on and on. See, LOL. Oh, we ain't got time for that. You get the idea. You can get hung up with idiot lenders that have no idea what they're doing while no one is telling you what they're doing while no one is actually doing anything. Take away. Use a local lender that your agent knows and trusts. I trust you. Remember, communication is key. Talk to your real estate agent. Me. Hey your trusted lender, and everyone involved early and often by being proactive and doing as much, you know, pre-planning as, as you can, can help minimize, you know, delays and ensure a smooth closing for you. And of course, if you're thinking about selling or buying in Manhattan Beach or Redondo Beach or Hermosa Beach or anywhere in the South Bay, Los Angeles, reply back or text me at 310-502-4240 because you can see that pre-planning is the best thing you can do before selling or buying. By the way, there's a lot more things that can cancel or cause a delay at closing. Oh, we ain't got time for that.